What's up, everyone? I hope you are all doing super well. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Property Fundamentals podcast, what we will be calling season zero of the show, because, girl, the inconsistency, the learning, the realizing that's happening, it's all happening in this season. So, but thank you guys all so much for just bearing with us for tuning in and for coming to learn about commercial property because that's what I want to do. I want to teach about commercial property. I want to teach you how we fund those deals and most importantly I want you to figure out how you can play in the space because ultimately that's what it's about. Breaking down the barriers that preclude many of us from being participants in the industry because let's face it property is capital intensive but if I can actually get many of us to play in the field if I can get many of us to think of creative ways that we can participate in the field I would have won. So for today's episode, we're chatting about how to fund your property transaction. That's all there is, right, to property. It's a capital intensive game, as many of us know, as many of us talk about from time to time. But how can we actually fund those transactions? Now, for this episode, I am making a number of assumptions. So please bear with me. And if they don't apply with to you, let me know in the comment section if you're watching on YouTube or if you're getting this from wherever you listen to your podcast from. You can drop me an email. My email address is in the in the description or in the show notes, however we you call that we're learning but yeah the assumptions that i'm making is that you have some knowledge of commercial property and then secondly i'm i'm assuming that you know you've got a property company set up or will set up an spv uh, for the transaction and you're not necessarily operating under your name so the biggest thing is that you're not a learner 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 beginner you've got some knowledge of property um, and you basically want to hear how you can find a potential deal and remember we're speaking about commercial property all right and also another disclaimer that i can't not mention views that i mentioned here are of my own i do work in commercial property finance i am employed as a member of a property finance team so but do note that this is all of my views not necessarily those of my employers um so if you would like to get in touch on a specific transaction you can also connect with me on linkedin i guess that's the best platform to have those professional types of conversations right now that that's out of the way let's get into it i want to talk to you guys about potentially five different ways that you can find your property transaction starting with the one that many of us know of which is a conventional loan and not necessarily a home loan but this is still a loan that you get from a bank to fund your property transaction when many of us think of loans for property we go the home loan route and actually when we're looking at commercial property finance i want us to look at what we call a conventional loan so it is very specific to the deal at hand um, and it is structured taking into consideration specific characteristics of the property that we're dealing with so we look at that property's risk profile we look at income we look at where it's located and we determine a value for that property and once we've determined a value we consider how much we're comfortable to lend against that value of the property now usually you would be looking at a conventional loan of around five years but not to worry there's usually a bullet that's also structured into the loan it is different to traditional home loans which let's say let's say you've got a 10 million rand property and you want to get a home loan over that right usually what we see is you go to the bank they tell you they will give you 10 million and it'll be financed over a 20-year period and then monthly you pay a hundred thousand that's what it would look like and then at the end of 10 years you owe nothing 20 years you owe nothing but when we look at conventional loans we take a shorter term type of view so let's say we give you a loan over a five-year period and also instead of saying it must fully amortize so you need to owe us nothing at the end of that loan term we can usually incorporate a bullet so let's say we want a bullet of 50 percent of the value of the property and also in terms of there's also other ways that we can customize it and not have a one sort of solution one size fits all we look at the risks we look at that specific property that specific deal and we tailor whatever we can give you for that so for example we can say you know instead of paying a flat amount throughout the five years let's start your installments quite low and as your rental income um, escalate then you can escalate your installments as well we can look at fixing interest we can look at having it floating we can look at having a blend of the two so some pushing fixed some pushing fl floating there's really it's 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 a risk mitigation type of exercise that we look at we look at the deal we look at the risks and we mitigate right um, the one thing that's a little bit different between home loans and conventional loans is that 
mostly for conventional loans, we look at maybe a loan to value ratio of between 60 and 75 percent. We don't usually do 100 percent as many home loan providers would offer you. So you would need to bridge that funding with either your equity or other forms of financing. But like I said, all of the transaction specific and this is one of the most commonly used uh, instruments in the commercial property space. The next instrument that I want to talk about is what we call mezzanine financing uh, or junior loans. Basically, mezzanine financing sit between senior loans as well as um, equity. And what they are is they're quite subordinated when you look at them in relation to your senior debt or the conventional loan that we just discussed now. They usually attract a higher interest rates to compensate for the elevated level of risk, but they're still not ex as expensive as equity would be. And then, like I said, they claim rank after senior debt, but then you still need to pay your mezzanine loan financiers before you pay yourself or other equity holders. So, Let's say you've got a deal, right? Um, and going back to what I explained as senior debt or conventional loan just now, you've got a deal and you've got, it's a hundred million rand deal, let's say, and you've got 60 million of that raised as senior debt, but you don't have 40 million in equity. What you can do is bridge that equity gap with, what, with, with the mezzanine finance. But obviously, when we look at it, we must look at it holistically and we must make sure that the property itself is able to cover interest from the mezzanine finance side as well as the senior debt side. And then at the end of the day, the debt still makes sense for you and the property holistically. Cool. Just to recap, this is a little bit more expensive than your normal senior or conventional loan. It is a little bit riskier for the mezzanine guys because they need to rank behind your senior equity, senior debt providers. But at the end of the day, um, it allows you to bridge that equity gap should you have any by you know getting a bank or another institution to provide that difference between the conventional loan as well as the equity that you have. Number three, we've already touched on this now. This is selling an equity stake in your business. Now, this is not necessarily meaning you have to put in the money, but it's also just inviting other participants to give you certain equity that you need for the deal. So if you, going back to the example that we're looking at, we need 100 million, banks are offering 60 as a loan. Let's say you've got another 10 as MES, um, and then there's 30 that you need now. You can go out to other players and sell out an equity stake and ask them to actually invest in your business. And actually looking at that, this is what we would call maybe crowdfunding or partnerships with other investors, right? And this is where you're not the only person that's bringing in the sweat, but you have other people to help you with the equity. There are some banks that have appetite for equity. There's private equity firms, and there's also private investors and partners that you, you could work with if that's the route that you want to go um, for. And then still speaking about equity, there's also your own equity that if you have that, you can put into the deal. So this is actual money or capital that you have saved. And not many of us have that. But also equity can also be sweat equity. If you don't have capital in the form of cash, consider how you can have capital in the form of investing time, in the form of negotiating leases, let's say, in the form of, I don't know, providing services that you're able to offer um, so, so you can consider all of that and see what you come up, what you have on the table. The last point that I want to mention is vendor financing. So this is usually when the seller of the property allows or gives you a portion of the purchase price as a loan. Now, the pricing of this would work very similar to how MES works. So it's a little bit more expensive than senior debt, but at the end of the day, it's still not as, equi as expensive as equity, right? So let's say you wanted to buy an industrial building and from one of the listed companies and you know it's a hundred million again you've got 60 million raised from the bank and you've got let's say 10 million your own equity if you could say to the owner of this asset that can they give you a loan of let's say 30 million and you will pay that with interest over a certain term the listed 
company or the seller would agree to that because whilst they're giving you a loan of 30 million, they're still getting in their bank an amount of 70 million through the loan of 60 from the bank as well as your equity of 10. So sellers are quite incentivized to grant um, vendor loans, especially if the money that they're giving out is a very small amount compared to what they stand to gain. That's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know. Do you have any specific questions? Do you want us to look at this? Maybe more slower. Uh, do we need to go into a lot more detail? Because we could, but at the end of the day, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to sit here for a 30 minute conversation that really took could could have been a 10 minute episode so let me know what you guys are thinking let me know if you've got any specific questions and until next time keep well